Hi kids, I'm Mr. Joe, and I'm here to celebrate with you. You know what day it is. It's Easter, and Easter means Easter bunnies, Easter baskets, and chocolate. But we're also going to talk about the real story behind Easter. Before that, let me ask, does anyone remember the memory verse from last week? It's from Philippians 2, verse 3. It says, value others more than yourselves. Value others more than yourself, which means put other people first. That's all it means is put other people first. Sometimes it's hard to do. Uh, we're going to talk more about Easter, but before that, let's start in prayer. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Heavenly Father, thank you for Easter. Help us understand the real story behind Easter. Lord, and also be with all the people that are hurting today. Help them realize that there's more uh, than uh, the, to life than this virus. We can beat it, Lord, and uh, help us reach out to others and show them the love of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, I said I'd talk about the real story behind Easter. You remember, last week, Jesus was uh, rode into town, and you know what? The people thought he was going to be the Savior, the Lord, the Messiah, and you'd think a, a person like that riding into town would be on some big, beautiful stallion, big white stallion with all this wonderful jewels and gear. Instead, he rode into ta town on a little donkey, didn't he? It totally blew people's minds. It turned their world upside down. It's not what they expected, and that's, that's how Jesus was. Here's another example. You'd think the Messiah, the Lord, would hang out with all the kings and queens and bigwigs of the day. You know who Jesus hung out with? The 12 disciples who were smelly fishermen and lowly tax collectors. So it turned everybody's world kind of upside down. Here's another one. He was the Lord, the Savior, going to change the world. They thought Jesus is going to destroy their enemies, right? You know what Jesus said? Love your enemies. Totally opposite of what they thought. So it turned the world upside down. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I got a little image here I'm going to be drawing. I'm not the greatest of drawers, but let me start drawing. Hmm. So you remember that Jesus uh, was captured by the, the soldiers and he could have run. He could have uh, hid, but instead he gave himself up. And they didn't understand that too. That turned their world upside down. They figured the guy would run, but Jesus gave himself up. And that's another example of how he turned the world upside down. In fact, the world is still believing in Jesus 2,000 years ago because he did so much, so many things differently. You know, another example is a great people a lot of times have put the power of soldiers and armies behind them. You know what Jesus was? The power of, was the power of love. He didn't need a bunch of soldiers. And that's another thing that turned the world upside down. They thought, wow, what kind of leader is this? He doesn't need soldiers. He preaches love. Let me read what the Bible says about that night of Easter. It's from the book of John, chapter 20, verse 1. The book of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Jesus was buried in this kind of a rock cave type tomb, and they put a big rock in front of it. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started to run for the tomb. That's what the Bible is saying. Let me continue with my picture here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see what this is or not. We'll see. Continuing in the Bible. Then the disciples 
went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? She said, they've taken my Lord away and I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he says, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you put him and I will go get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. All of a sudden she realized it was Jesus coming back from the dead. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead and tell my brothers everything that you have heard and seen. And to finish with the scripture, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them the things that she, that Jesus had said to her. So I've been telling you that Jesus turned the world upside down. With everything he did and everything he taught. You see what the picture is now? It's Jesus. Everything that Jesus did was different than what people expected. And he's the one who made the dominant force in the universe love. And during Easter, we realize that, hey, there's more beyond this life. Jesus came back from the dead, and there is more to, to, to the world. Here's the one, two, three of salvation through Jesus. The one, two, three. Number one, we all do dumb things. We all do bad things. It's called sin, right? We kind of deserve punishment for that. Number two, there's a person who will take all that punishment for us, Jesus. The only one who did nothing wrong ever will take our punishment. And number three, all we have to do to receive that gift is let Jesus into our hearts. One, two, three. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you get that great gift of uh, redemption. So that's the real story of Easter. Let me close in prayer, and we'll, we'll, we'll see you soon. All right. One, two, three. God, we simply don't have enough words to say how thankful we are for Jesus. When he died on the cross, he put us first instead of himself. It was the ultimate example of humility, God. You are the creator of the universe, yet you cared enough about me and my life. You love everyone. You loved us so much that you sent your only son, the perfect one, to be our savior. And today we're here to celebrate because Jesus is alive. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. Real story of Easter. You all have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye.